Hey guys, welcome to the shed, the dark, dirty place in the shed that everybody knows probably exists, but they don't want to know. This is the place where the scary stuff happens, the stuff that nobody wants to talk about, the router, the bandsaw, the arbor press, the scroll saw, and the belt sander. The tools that hold dark secrets of the tortures of wood. You know, every once in a while I'll get somebody make a comment to me like, how could you do that to a guitar? How could I do that to a guitar? The real question is, how could you let me do that to a guitar? Now, first off, I want to clear up a misnomer. Don't have a stroke or anything. But I'm going to share something with you that you know the underbelly of the guitar world exists, and I'm a deep, dark part of it. You have no idea, the average reasonable person has no idea how many guitars come through my shed. And you think they all just come in pristine and then I have a need to like bust them up. And you never see the good stuff, guys. We're not here to look at the good stuff because my good stuff is somebody else's bad stuff. But, you know, I get guitars coming in. Let's look here. This one is called the Bedazzler because somebody put rhinestones up here. Anyway, I was in a class, a college class, and my alarm went off and said, there is an arch top guitar somewhere down in deep, dark L.A., and I had to go get it. Well, the Bedazzler has a big crack right there. And it's got some other issues. And so... It will turn into a junk pile with a pickup, and somebody will love it. But that crack is not pretty, and putting some kind of fancy sponge in it, playing the hydration game, is not going to fix it. So, you're asking yourself, how many Harmony guitars that look like that do I have? Well, do you have an abacus? Because... Here's two right here. Let's look at this one. This one is in a little bit better shape, but where's my pointer? It's got a big crack running up to the F hole, got a, a couple other cracks, and then this is the real beauty. It splits and sinks right here on the back. Neck needs to be done. This one has been through hell to the point where Satan is praying for it. So. When I come in with a guitar, and I'm, and I'm fixing to come in with one that's going to freak some of you out. So this is like a conditioning, grooming video, so you can get used to the hell that you'll see. Now, how many of those headstocks did you see? Well, there's one. There's two. The nice thing about these guitars, it doesn't matter if you drop them. There's three. Three, all the same, right at my fingertips. Now... This one here is probably the worst because the neck needs to be reset. No, it's not blonde. Somebody stripped the paint off of it. And look at this. It's got a hidden compartment. See that? Hidden compartment. Um, it is literally falling apart at the seams. You know that song, Falling Apart at the Seams? I'll give you a link to it. Right up there, right about now, you know the band Cinderella. The guy can play slide guitar. I think he's going to end up with one of my guitars sometime if he hasn't already. Anyway, what is today all about? Well, I am going to show you how to make the orthopopic. You hear this one popping? Oh, look, it's got a crack on the back. It's got two cracks on the back. It's totally busted up. But I'm going to make... Some orthopopic, I call them orthopopic because these guitars are really popping in your ears. Oh look, crack on the side. Is there anywhere that this guitar is not cracked? No, there's not. But I'm going to show you how to knock guitars down on your feet. How to use tools like a bandsaw and a scroll saw 
and a belt sander and some things like that to make your own cleats and splints. And then we'll get this episode out of the way and then shh, we won't talk about it after this. One of the things you want to put away, you want to wipe, wipe, wipe. So let's get to work and I'll see you in a bit. Remember, I am preparing you for something you're not ready to see a couple episodes. In fact, the one after this. Light some candles. Go to a church. Find somebody that can perform an exorcism because it's going to be bad. Okay, let's go. All right, we're at the bandsaw and I'm going to kind of show you the setup. And since this stuff is harder than a rock, this dicornia, we are going to change the bandsaw blade. I'm going to give you a couple hints about doing that because I've heard people get frustrated. But let's start with this. There's two things that we're going to do here. One of them is called building a cleat, which is kind of, if you've got a crack in a guitar body running this way, you cut thin pieces of wood to glue onto the back of the crack, and the grain of the wood needs to be running opposite of the crack. Because if you glue in a cleat to stop the crack in the future, it opens back up, and you've got it running this way, running with the grain, the grain will crack on the cleat. So this is how we're going to cut cleats. You just cut a piece here on the bandsaw and cut little ones here. And those again go in the back to stabilize the crack once you've got sealed up. We're also going to cut splints, which means you're going to turn the wood on its edge and you're going to cut something to actually fill a gap in a crack that you can't stabilize. You'll put cleats behind the crack, get that right, and then cut splints that will fit in and you need to taper them and do all that so we're going to cut both those now this dicornia is rock hard stuff it's again new guinea antique is what they call it it's for outdoor furniture decking that kind of stuff really durable and they say that the the lighter color the heartwood is the more durable it is if it starts to turn that kind of color maybe the less durable it is whatever that means but we're going to cut thin pieces of this stuff for splints and cleats. And I'm going to need a bandsaw to do that. This stuff is rock hard. It'll make anything dull. And when you start seeing your bandsaw making cuts that drift one way or another, it's time for a new blade. So let's open this bandsaw up. Remember, I've got my bandsaws and routers on foot pedals. So there's the safety switch right over here. And whether it's on or not, the foot pedal controls whether or not the thing is working. So when you open this up, I want you to make sure that all of the power is off. And then you'll see here that there are remnants of tape. That's because when I put a new band on it, I'm not going to sit here and struggle. I'm going to take pieces of tape, and as I put the new band or, or blade on, I'm going to do this... To hold it on until it's on and all tensioned up and then I adjust the tensioner. So let me show you what that looks like as I do it. Okay, first things first, I've got a new blade here. Um, when you get rid of your old blade, don't just throw it in the trash can because people are starting to separate trash more and more nowadays and you'll have somebody reaching in and cutting themselves on something rusty and you'll be responsible for tetanus. But I'm slacking this blade off like this and then there we go it's the one I just put on but we take this off like so we're going to pay attention to how the teeth run they're running down down okay so again we're going to make sure that that blade goes somewhere other than in the trash can um, to be a hazard later, wrap it up, mark it, put it in a scrap pile where it gets used by a metal recycler. But I'm putting my pieces of tape here like so. Then I'm going to open up the new one. This can be kind of like dealing with a chain. If the blade isn't going the right way, you can just, 
Most people can't figure this out. You turn it inside out and then flip it around. You see what I'm saying? So those are headed up. I don't want that. Flip it this way. Turn it inside out. I don't know how much of this is being captured on the camera. Then I put it here. And the first thing I'm going to do before I worry about anything is put tape there. And turn it a little bit. And put tape there. Like so. Okay. Then I'm going to go to the bottom wheel. And I'm going to do the same thing. Because if you don't do this, what ends up happening, notice you got to put it inside of the tracking guides and that kind of thing. But if you do it this way, when you turn it on, you don't have to worry about it jumping ship right away. Okay. There we go. Now I can just reach around behind and put the tensioner back up. And then I can do a little bit of tightening. And make sure things are okay. And then I'm actually going to turn it on. Okay, watch me hit the switch and watch that nothing's going to happen until I hit my foot pedal on the floor. This thing is going to kick on. It's going to center itself and you'll see the tape fly off. Okay, there we go. Now I can flip the switch off. It's still on. You can see that it says on right there, but I've got my foot pedal on. I just flip that off and then I can turn this by hand and kind of figure out is it tracking the way I want it? Do I need to tension it up just a little bit more? There's adjustments on the back that move the blade this way and this way. So it's that simple. This tape is going to save you a ton of time and frustration. Okay, now I've taken a piece of neck wood and just lined it up here because I want to cut some thin slices of this like so that I can use for either cleats by cutting across the end once I have a thin piece or I can use for splints when it's running this way. So I've just ba basically taken a piece of uh, neck cut off and used my square to go to both sides and figure out is everything lined up in square, and it is. I don't want to force this stuff, and I want to make sure that my guide here is set where it just barely goes under, and then we're going to cut a couple strips of this stuff. I want to make a number of cleats that, again, the grain on this stuff runs this way. I want the cleats to be across the grain. So we're just going to set this up and, and put a guide here so we can run this from this way and cut a number of cleats and have a nice little pile of those while we're here. Okay, this again is something as simple as figuring out how much distance between this edge of this guide and the blade you want for your cleats to be. It could be whatever you want. And then just taking your straight edge and making sure that your clamps on the back and front match each other. All right, there we go. Nice little batch of cleats here. I think I will round the edges off a little bit on a belt sander and pay attention to which way the grain is running there so we want to glue them this way and not this way that's why I don't cut them square that way you know uh, the long side is running with the grain you glue them in like this all right there we go we have a number of different thicknesses of material here and depending on how wide the crack is that we create or assist um, will tell us 
stuff is pretty flexible but it... all right guys there we go really simple you just got to have the right materials and remember you get your fingers in there they're mine anyway um we're going to use some of those splints and cleats on this guitar i keep scaring you about when you see a title that says warning not for the purist that'll be the one now i want to give a shout out because you don't get this wood uh, that you're going to need to do this at clone depot or home depot yeah you don't find the wood that you're going to need to do this stuff especially the cleat material it's got to be durable the grains got to be right and you don't want to be putting two by fours in your guitars because then they'll knack dive and do all that kind of stuff so i'm going to give you a sh i'm going to give you a hint and it's going to be a link below my friend drew at Adirondack Tone Woods in Norwood, New York. That's right, Norwood, New York, cultural capital of the world. Drew there has an eBay site where you can order this kind of stuff. Reasonable, have it shipped to you quickly, and it is good stuff. I'm going to give you a link down below. So, hey, Drew, thanks for sending me this stuff. It's working out great. And uh, you know what? If y'all don't see Drew, you ain't going to be like this. I'm sorry. So just go ahead and live in mediocrity or get a hold of Drew. Thanks, Drew. That said, uh, give me a like, a subscribe. Let me know. Do you really want to see the shop? Do you really want to see more of the mysteries and marvels that are in my shop? If you do, send me an email. It will be coming up here in just a minute. See ya!